Good Sunday morning, everybody. I'm happy to be back. I hope you're happy to see me. And today, like I promised, one of the recipes I wanted to try was Brenda Gant's buttermilk biscuits. So here we go. I haven't done them first try, so we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Got my iron skillet, all greased and ready. I need new cutters because my cutters are variegated, so I cut the lid off a can just like she did, except the way they make cans nowadays. My can opener won't work and I can't get it to cut on my automatic can opener here that cuts it around the sides. There's not enough flip on it to catch it. So we're gonna see if that won't work. And so I know Cordine, of course I haven't seen her in her video for a while, might have been a smart move to watch it before I started this, wouldn't it? Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to get, she calls it a large egg. I have my self-rising flour right here. I have a glob. It's probably, I would say close to a half a cup if you measured it. So, and all she does is she just plops it right in there. You shake your buttermilk up real good. I did shake it when I took it out of the refrigerator. So here we go. Let's see. Let's see what happens. This is kind of exciting actually to me because I've never done this. So pour about a cup maybe so far of the liquid. And then she just sticks her hand in there and she pulls in a little flour. First she mixes up the milk or the buttermilk. Okay, and she just keeps adding a little flour at a time. I think I need a little more buttermilk than that. It's kind of dry. Probably end up making more, more biscuits than I planned on since I hadn't experimented with this before. There we go. We're getting more of a biscuit consistency here. Let's see. If you heard the beep, it's because the oven's preheated now to 400 degrees. Like, I'm going to get that Crisco, you know, I, I'm still seeing, feeling little lumps of it, which is fine. And it's starting to pull away from the bottom there, you see. So when I lift this out, it shouldn't leave any wet or anything in. Oh, grab a little of this. Flour my board. Couldn't find my pastry mat today, so... We're just going to do it this way. Uh, oops, it came apart on me. That's probably not unusual, somebody just learning how to do this. <laughs> so I might have needed just a touch more buttermilk in that. We'll see. Mine didn't come out as clean as hers did. But as you can see, it's perfectly dry in there, ready for another batch of biscuits when I'm ready. And then you have to take, of course she can, she's good at this, she's done it for so long. But she keeps it mostly on one thing or one hand. Then you grab a little more flour. Do get it on your hands. And then you start what you call soft kneading. At least that's what I call it because you don't want it to uh, work too much. Biscuits tend to get tough, but I've watched her do it and it's not uh, that touchy. But you can slap it around pretty good for the most part. 
There we go. We're getting it. Didn't have enough flour. It was pretty sticky. Okay. Okay, now I need to wash my hands, get all this grease. Need a little soap. Actually, I think the dough looks pretty good, you guys. I, um, I want to tell y'all that if you're lucky enough to grow up with a mom who got to stay at home or was at least home in the evenings, my parents started out in 1960 when I was six and they bought a bar with a restaurant. And then uh, about 15 years after that, they built a building and it became a restaurant with a bar. So they had a huge family room, a bar room, uh, families just wanted to be able to bring their kids in because we had the best food around, not to brag, but everybody loved it. And uh, great steaks, prime rib was oh, so good. My favorite was what they used to call the Delmonico because it was a cut of meat they used at Delmonico's in New York and it's actually a ribeye. But that's my favorite cut of meat. So let's Let's see if we can cut some biscuits, shall we? I'm gonna dump a little flour out here for my cutter. Still a little sticky. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. See how they turn out. I'm sure they take about 10 to 12 minutes. Oh, keep sticking my can in the flour. I don't really want to do that. I might put pieces of biscuit dough in there, and I don't want to do that. You want to put them in so they touch. That'll help them rise if you leave them far apart they won't rise nearly as well oh this can's working just fine I was afraid since you couldn't it might airlock on me this out. I can get three or four more biscuits in there. You see, it's a little sticky, so I just tap it with a little more flour. Not very much. Just a little a little bit. I've done pretty good according to my pan here. I think I can squeeze one more in there and have very little dough left. Okay, hmm, I have just a little, this little tiny glob here, if you can see it, and I don't have room for a circular biscuit, probably, but I can make a 
<laughs> I have a smiley face one. So there we go. I'm going to stick those in the oven. And I'm going to keep watching them until they're golden brown. Oops. I have to get some pans out. I forgot my in there. Okay, I am going to pause you now while I wait on the biscuits to get done. Later, for lunch, I'm going to make some chicken and bacon gravy to go over the biscuits for our lunch. So I will be back in, oh, I don't know, a couple hours or so uh, with with that recipe, but uh, right now I'll only be paused for about 10 or 12 minutes and I'll be right back. So I hope to see you all real soon. Hi everybody. I'm back. The biscuits are done. Uh, they look pretty good. I do something a little different than Brenda because when they're about three-fourths of the way done, I add a little butter to the top. They could have been a little browner but I don't think they're showing up as brown on the camera as they look to me. Uh, I was going to show you this too because after I got done with my, my sill mat and the flour, there was still a bunch of flour on it that was okay. So I got my sieve out and took out all the chunks of stuff that was on the mat and then put the flour back. So that goes in the garbage bowl. And who wants to try a biscuit? Me. <laughs> I wish you were here, or at least some of you were here. We got we got 10 biscuits out of what I made. One of them being a crescent looking thing. So let's see, what can I get out here real quick? Oh, that's gonna come out really, oh, come out so nice. So nice, and they are hot. So, I'm going to use, I was always I was taught growing up that you never use a knife on a buttermilk biscuit. That you poke it with your fork and pull it apart. I don't know if you can see the steam coming off of that. That is fluffy, and that is hot. So now... A little butter on it. Oh boy, I'll tell you what. Let's taste it just plain. Mm. That is exactly the biscuit I have been trying to make for years and years and sometimes I succeed and sometimes I fail badly this is a winner and there's the bottom let's try some I have some there's enough carbs in this biscuit <laughs> that I'm going to go ahead and use some marmalade sugar free of course it's not carb free don't uh, that's something I could tell you about don't mistake, you low carbers and you keto people out there, that it says sugar free. This is an orange marmalade. There's there's carbs in oranges. It just means no sugar added usually. Check your counts. Check your nutritional things. Uh, you want to be careful because a lot of people can't figure out why they're not losing because they think they're following everything so strict, and maybe they're not. But they don't know any better. So there's a little tip there. Let's check this out. Mm. Everybody, that is so, so good. I highly recommend this recipe. It gets a big A plus from me. Although I didn't, since I've never done it the Gantt way, I had a little trouble with it working it in a bowl. I think the next time I'll work my Crisco and buttermilk in a small bowl and then I'll just keep adding self-rising flour till I get it the texture I want. 
I think for me, until I get, you know, the touch and feel of it a little better, it would probably work better that way for anybody that isn't an expert in making biscuits. If you're new to it, I'd do it that way. I take my Crisco and my buttermilk and I get it all squished up. And then I'd start adding flour. If you need a little more buttermilk like I did when I was making these, just add a little because I didn't measure. And that's another thing. Uh, real quick, I grew up without, I think I told you, without grandparents or grandmothers to teach me to cook. They both passed away when I was eight years old. My parents bought their bar in 1960 when I was six, about six and a half, I guess, and they worked nights. My mom, between cleaning the house and running the business and with my Uncle Dave and my Aunt Dee, they were partners. My dad and Dave were brothers, and they all worked very, very hard, and it showed because when you run a business, you need to be there, so one of them was always there. When they first started, both of them were there. They worked like dogs when they opened that place up. They were just there all the time, but they were only open from four to midnight. So it was like a six day a week, eight hour day job, except <laughs> they would have to go in the morning and do the banking and get the setup done for the four o'clock. So they'd be there from 7.30 to 9.30 in the morning. So there's two more hours out of their day. So they did work hard, but it showed, and uh, the town of Huntington loved Bob and Dave so much, and they were really, really sad when they sold it after 25 years, uh, and that was 1985. So you can see that it's been closed or in other hands for a lot longer than it was actually open. Started downtown on State Street, moved out on Business 24, right out by the bypass, and sadly... <laughs> It's so sad when I have to go to the license branch because that's what that building is now. The license branch is in the bar room and it just, it just pulls at my heart because I want, I want it to look like it did when they, when they had it. It, it was such a fun place to go. So anyway, biscuits y'all, they're worth a few minutes. I, it didn't take me long. I, I'd be done. It probably took them. Close to 20 minutes. So my biscuits, they don't look a lot bigger, but that's I started out at uh, 10 or 12 minutes, and then I just add five, and then I added three, then I added two. So I think we're pushing the 20 minute mark on them to be done. But every stove is different. Every run, some run hotter, some run cooler. So if yours would run hotter, don't set them for 20 minutes. You might come back to hockey pucks. I mean, seriously, you've got. You've got to be able to keep an eye on them and watch them for that little brown top that they've got. Let me show you one more time before I shut this off. And there they are. And they are soft and flaky. And I think that chicken bacon gravy is going to taste marvelous for lunch. Not a low carb day, people. I'm sorry. But when I, I knew when I started this cooking uh, video thing that I'd be making a lot of stuff that wasn't low carb and I'm going to have to really kind of watch myself and <laughs> watch Dave too. So a lot of my friends might benefit from all this because a lot of those sweet treats and everything, they're just going to be given away because we just can't have them in the house. We just don't need them. We eat pretty good at meals and we just don't need snacks. So I hope you all have a blessed Sunday. Uh, take care. Keep tuning in. I might make another couple videos today, but I'm not going to post uh, those until Monday because I promised y'all I'd show you meatloaf today. So later this afternoon, I'm going to make meatloaf. So I think we'll have meatloaf, corn on the cob, and some creamy mashed potatoes. So we'll see how that goes. I have not made mashed potatoes forever. I mean, I've made them years and years, but Bob Evans came out with a, a really awesome mashed potato. And when it's just Dave and I, we just buy a tub of those and they're really good. But today, everything, uh, the potatoes and the 
meatloaf. Everything will be from scratch. And there might even be some leftover biscuits to have along with it. Because I don't think we're going to eat nine biscuits for lunch. Not going to happen. But they are really good. So I hope you all try them. And let me know what you think. I need, I need feedback, people. So the more information I get from all of you, the better off the page can be for everybody. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I love all the comments. You're so generous and kind. Thank you very much. And I will see you later.